Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Talk About It Tuesday with This Is Improv. My name is Angelica Zadak, and today we are interviewing Dewey Nelson. Hi, Dewey. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing great, and I really appreciate being here. This is very exciting. I really appreciate you being here with your awesome jacket and shirt <laughs> and, and uh, the undershirt as well. Yeah, the whole ensemble is wonderful. I feel like the experience was going to be big, so I needed to at least dress up, you know, to match that. You yeah. did definitely like amplified our experience, which is cool. <laughs> happy to do so. Yeah, and we're so happy. I'm happy. I'm the only one here right now, except for some puppies in the back. Uh, but I'm really happy that you could join us. I'm really excited to talk to you. I know like reading some of your uh, work, I have only read your sketch material. I know you have, um, you know, a book out. What, what, what's the book? So the book, yeah, uh, the book is called Dewey and the Blur of Brandy. And everybody has asked me, so is this like autobiographical? What is this? But really the like inception of this book, what the title was written before the book and I didn't even come up with the title. There was a picture of me and uh, uh, my sister-in-law's dog. We were at the beach in Florida and uh -huh. my sister-in-law just posted a bunch of pictures of Facebook. Uh -huh. One of them was me on the beach with this dog and the dog was mid run. And she just captioned the photo, Dewey in the blur of Brandy. And I thought, that's just a weird, like, weird art, like odd phrasing, like in a fun way. Like I just read that and I just, it didn't leave my mind. So I just commented, Dewey and the Blur of Brandy is my favorite book as a joke. And then uh -huh. somebody said like, you should write it. And then I was like, ha ha ha. And then I was just listening, like in my head, I was thinking, what would the Blur of Brandy even mean? And I sort of came up with this coming of age, you know, mystery in the wake of a tragedy. And there's, I was off to the races and I wrote a book. That's so cool. Uh, and, and all from inspired by a caption for a photo. And that's pretty incredible. Yeah, I feel like the best ideas come quickly. And I just saw, speaking yet again about Florida, great Floridian, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Tom Petty. And I know you're in Florida, so I'm going to yeah. talk about Florida a lot. Okay, cool. Uh, Thanks. <laughs> I just saw a documentary about Tom Petty and he said some of the best songs are the ones that just come really quickly where you're for like you can barely keep up with your hand writing down mm -hmm. and uh like this idea i didn't really like think i really want to write a book but gosh what would it be about like should i have you know a, a man versus society man versus man what should the conflict be like i just like this weird thing was thrown into my head and i just couldn't get it out it was just like a weird note or something that's really cool. That's that's incredible. That that spark of inspiration, like the old timey muse thing, it really struck you at the right time. That's yeah. awesome. I think everybody needs to start making odd phrasing choices on Facebook. Now's the time. <laughs> We're gonna get a lot of good art. Or or art. Good or not will be up to the critics. Right. I mean, as long as it's art for someone to like, you know, judge and see. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Best piece of advice. I, I love that advice. Like, just look at the captions, I guess, as a, <laughs> as a way to get started. Um, well, how did you get started? How did it, when did it all begin for you? When did you get into the arts? I mean, I don't know. When I was a kid, the first piece of art that struck me as like, this is different than everything I've seen was the movie Jurassic Park. Mm -hmm. And I then was like, why do you want me and my friends want to grow up and be Jedis? Like, that's not a career. I want to be a storyteller. So I would say then, uh, whether or not I've followed through, that's another story. But no, I've always had a fascination with art or things that weren't necessarily practical, but really left an impact. Mm -hmm. So um, that was where I got started in appreciating it. Before then, I was just a, a potato of a human. And I was just, you know eating groceries that's all I that's all I did I was just a child who ate things until yeah. then that's when I woke up um but got started in like actually putting purpose to writing or thinking about art per se I, I would say I had an, a, a, an awakening in uh, high school with improv 
everything oh. leads to and from improv. Rome, improv is the great, you know, Rome. All roads lead to it if you <laughs> let it. And uh, I'm happy to say that with this is improv because I, I think yeah. everything's improv. I, that, I that, love that analogy. That analogy is amazing. I'm going to steal it. I'll I'll use your do. name under, you know. <laughs> So please do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just like everything I appreciate it. It's like, wow, you can just take a basis from improv and, and, and really get your personality into a performance. And then of course, everybody in improv was, you know, had crazier ideas and things that they did outside of practice and performances. So I've always been scribbling ideas, always making short films with friends of mine. Um, and, uh, but getting a book out there for, I would say that's the only thing that's like, outside of just sharing with friends, mm -hmm. uh, I just had the opportunity. I, I had a job where I had a lot of downtime. So I would just be like, well, not doing anything. Mm -hmm. Chapter two. And <laughs> yeah, instead of reverting to your potato ways, uh, which was good, you know, like you <laughs> ate, you stayed alive. and You screwed a light bulb in me, it would turn on. Oh, cool. Whoa, you're electrifying. I was That's a, awesome. I'm, I'm sorry, did you think I was a metaphorical potato? I was a literal potato right. until it was I my saw. Bad. Yeah. It was my bad. I thought the food grew. Yeah. I watched Jurassic Park and I was transformed. A grand transfiguration happened. Right. And I was like Pinocchio turned into mm -hmm. a real boy. Oh, so. so like Jurassic Park was the blue fairy for you. Mm -hmm. Nice. See, now you're getting it. That's I'm, exactly. I'm understanding now. Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry if I wasn't clear before. I should no, no, have no. just said when I was a child. Yeah, Jurassic Park was the blue fairy. I mm -hmm. was a potato, and we could have just foregone that whole. Like everyone would just. Oh, we get it at that point. Yeah, I. I'm just like so fixated in analogies. I didn't think about the reality of magic, and you know, that was my bad. Moving forward, all the analogies will have a literal meaning. Literally, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks for clarifying. Okay, so. Uh, you know, you, you had all these magical moments uh, getting into the arts and progressing. Um, what, what was one of your favorite mo moments? You talked about like finding out what this book was going to be about, but is there a memory or something in improv and writing or something that really stands out to you? Like throughout my life or throughout the process yes. of throughout my life? You can, Gosh. you can choose. It could be through the book because it was the most recent. So maybe it's the thing you most remember from, uh, you know, getting into the arts or, you know, your potato life. If, you know, anything else happened to you uh, while you were a potato. <laughs> uh, I mean, to talk about improv, I love that. Uh, the first big like wave of like, like a spark, I'd say we did our very first improv show in high school. Was, our team was called SOFA, which stood for Silly, Outrageous, Funny Actors, uh, which is still going, by the way. It's coached by my now brother-in-law. So what? thank you, Matt. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> um, uh, it's still going. and uh, But we did a show for a school assembly, mm -hmm. which was it was like the winter assembly. It was like Christmas music slash announcements. And at the end, it's like before you can finally leave this assembly here's some improv it was like <laughs> the worst setup for live comedy like in order to leave you have to watch the show you're trapped yeah. you have to watch the weird kids you don't talk to <laughs> they now demand your attention mm -hmm. and it was like uh in in hindsight i know how much it was stacked against us like that audience because mm -hmm. they're just like Ugh. but uh we went up and um uh we did it was all short form meaning, you know, games. In this scene, we have party quirks, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I just landed a joke kind of early in the game. Uh, not that it was brilliant or anything, but just to hear like classmates laugh. It's like, oh, that thing I'm trying to do, I am doing it. I'm having fun. Everybody's having fun. That was like in, in comedy, that was a big moment. Um, yeah. And it's just like, great. We all think the weird thing that I thought in my head is funny now. Uh, and I, I think that's true for most people. Like, I think we all respond to something and think something's funny. We just need to share it in some sort of way. And a lot of people do, and that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, like, like you. And then uh, what what's really cool is that like you had it at such a like low moment and you were able to amplify 
<laughs> your audience and relate. But that that's something that's so cool. Exactly what you said. You're able to connect with them on their level, you know, your audience. And that that's pretty cool. It, it was. And I mean, it's only in hindsight that I knew that we were amp we were like raising the, the energy level. Because at the time I was probably just spazzing out like, we're gonna do jokes. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> You know, back, I don't even think we were backstage. I think we were in the audience, the only people excited to be there, knowing that in a couple minutes we would be going up and performing. Wait, so it was a surprise? No, no one knew that they were walking into the assembly and afterward there would be an improv performance? No, I don't think anybody knew anything at all. Oh, wow. I think we knew there was going to be an assembly. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would have these strange assemblies in school where mm -hmm. it would be like a mixture of like announcements. I feel at least maybe teachers would just sort of like shoehorn those in. But then we'd be like, well, it's the holidays. So here are like the choir class singing uh, White Christmas. And it's like no one knew that was going to happen. But it was like they didn't say like everybody come to this meeting that you have to come to anyway. Mm -hmm. we would just know we were going to an assembly and we would find out once we got there like we didn't know if it was going to be like you know uh, a sheriff's deputy talking about the dangers of like drugs or if it was mm -hmm. going to be like a the student um fashion show like stuff would just happen wow <laughs> at least i didn't pay attention enough i bet maybe if you asked one of my classmates it's like there was a curriculum and a <laughs> daily schedule where were you I was working on impressions for my Hello. improv class. Hello, trying to make you laugh. Hey, I have been only been a human for like 12 years at this point because mm -hmm. I, I was a potato. Mm -hmm. We forget this, yeah. Still developing the brain system and how scheduling works. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Still yeah. bad at that. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, like because you come from being a potato to, you know, being a teen in an improv uh, troupe, and then now, you know, where you are now writing, what advice do you have for, you know, young spuds out there? Oh, for the young spuds, the mm -hmm. spudniks, as I call them, mm -hmm. um, just do it. Like, almost like Nike says, uh, it's sort of an oversimplification but I wish when people ask you, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up, which is something I still don't really know. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a, a backwards question. It's what do you want to do right now? Because there's really like if you want, if you have very lofty goals, you can mm -hmm. do the version that you don't get paid for. If you want to be, you know, a rock star, somebody will have to like sign a contract for you and, and get you a studio deal but nothing is stopping you from perfecting your craft, writing songs, like nothing is stopping you. Uh, like when I was writing the book that's out now, a friend of mine shared on online, it's like, my niece just wrote a book. You can, you can get it on Amazon. And it's like, that's what I'm trying to do. And this high school student just straight up did it. Uh -huh. So you can like, if you're in ninth grade and you think I wanna write a book, you can, and you can have a book app by the time you're in 10th grade. Whether it's good or not, you'll find out through repetition. Um, so constantly just do the thing you wanna be. Like if somebody asks, what do you wanna be when you grow up? Be that thing already, just like, oh, what I wanna do is get paid for the thing I'm already doing, mm -hmm. so. I think that's, that's incredible advice. That's awesome. Oh, thanks. I wish yeah. I told myself, but. I was still half you potato didn't... and potatoes really don't take their own advice. Oh, I never thought of that. I never yeah. knew about like potato sociology, psychology. Oh, huh, that's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. The potato famine, potatoes would just implode. They just didn't trust oh, no. themselves. Oh, oh, believe in yourself, potatoes. Believe in yeah. yourselves. Uh, well, thank you for the advice for the young spuds. I, I think that's, I think that's incredible advice, uh, because we don't hear that enough whatsoever. Uh, and it is so important to just do it. Uh, sorry, Nike. Um, and now we owe them. Now, you, now we have to pay royalties oh, to Nike for oh, saying that. Sorry. Oh, we're editing that out. That never happened. That never happened. Just bleep it out in every company. It's like, you know, just do it. You know, like they say beep, and then people be like, was it Pepsi? <laughs> Whose slogan is that? Yeah. It or was it a was it like a bomb that was dropped? Like, who knows? 
who knows what it was we don't know it was edited out it never happened <laughs> or maybe they'll think it was something gandhi said and oh, i was like who yeah. said it it's bleeped out was it some wisdom from gandhi we can't pay royalties to gandhi no we, we don't it. know how to do that no we can't no we don't <laughs> we don't have those kinds of sponsors uh so now uh something unsponsored is the taco question portion of the day what is the taco question of the day it is a spontaneous uh surprise question for you or a series of questions relating to tacos because this is talk about a tuesday great are you ready for talk about a tuesday Oof, it was a surprise. So I'm going to say I'm not. I'm not ready. Yeah. So it's, it's... <laughs> he's not surprised, or he's very surprised. He doesn't know what to do. Yes. Just Let's like at the auditorium. Great. Perfect. So the first taco question If you were to get a taco, what would be your preferred location? Would you get a taco in LA or, you know, would you get a taco from Florida? Gosh. Being that I am currently in LA mm -hmm. and the most recent taco I had was also in LA, mm -hmm. I would have to say I'm gonna stick with the LA tacos. They're really good here. I, I see. don't uh -huh. I sticking with what the, you know. Sticking with what you know. I don't know. Uh see Florida tacos, I don't know where, like if there's like a particular taco district in like Seminole County or something. It's like, hey, if you haven't gone to the like the the the, the Tallahassee taco hut and mm -hmm. you don't know what you're missing so I don't know I want I want people to tell me where the best taco in Florida is okay uh we'll we'll begin a search and we'll we'll <laughs> we'll send along <laughs> that information uh and and then we'll have like the real decision the real deal breaker uh, come from you. uh second question this is going to twist and turn uh, into another direction. It's taco related in the taco family. We're switching over to burrito. All right. So as far as burritos go, one thing that Miami does have, uh, we're not in Miami, so to speak, but we're pretty close. One thing we do have is a sushi burrito. Would you go for the sushi burrito, or do you prefer the standard? Would you stick to the standard burrito? Just, you know, like that, that diaper of a sandwich. Um, well, you had me a diaper of a sandwich, by the way. Um, <laughs> anytime that phrase comes up, I know mm -hmm. I'm at the right party. Mm -hmm. um, I will say I'm a very boring eater. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, it's only recently that I've sort of forced myself to try new things. And I, when I mean new things, I mean like guacamole. I mean like, I'm very boring. I have traveled uh -huh. the world and I will like, my wife thinks I'm crazy because we went to Hong Kong uh -huh. and I went to a restaurant and I, I found a Mexican restaurant that served a chicken and cheese and sour cream burrito. Like oh. just those three ingredients. <laughs> I've done that around the world. And uh, I mean, Zurich, Paris, great burritos. It's weird that I don't know any tacos in Florida, but if you want the best Swiss, Swiss burrito, I can tell you where to get it. Um, what was your question? Oh yeah, the sushi burrito. So I've also Wait, recently... let's go back. Let's just go back for a second. What's a yeah. Swiss burrito? Yeah, well, in, in Zurich, Switzerland, there's this great place called burrito district it's near uh -huh. all these like you're walking through downtown zurich and you see great you know uh -huh. chocolate stores and fine swiss restaurants and then you find this little hole in the wall taco so now we owe or maybe you can get an endorsement from taco district i don't know that Call would be them great up and, hey, they've got hey, plenty taco of money district. in switzerland yeah <laughs> yeah uh yeah great it's a great burrito it's uh but i've recently as in like as of last year I became a, uh, uh, a vegetarian. Ooh. And so I've before expanding my palate. Mm -hmm. So I sort of like said, okay, I'm willing to try new things while cutting out most things. <laughs> so sushi, a lot of it uh -huh. is fish. So mm -hmm. the answer is yes, I will have a sour cream and cheese and seaweed burrito. I will try that. Okay. Very cool. So basically, um, a vegetable roll, uh, Essentially, you, you would pretty much have something like that as a burrito, yeah. like a larger version of that. Yeah, I will I will try anything twice. 
Okay. All right. Awesome. Interesting. I've learned something new by asking you these questions, which is awesome. <laughs> Final question from our spontaneous taco segment. So your final question, if you were to make, I've learned a little thing about you. So what would be your ideal taco? How would you build your ideal taco? My ideal taco, gosh. Mm -hmm. Um, So this is, I'm at like a weird, like confluence of of feelings now, because like I said, I, I am very boring. So when you encourage me to Mm -hmm. go like swing for the fences on my ideal taco, Mm -hmm. it's very minimal, but I'm trying to think of what ways can I make it uh, 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 different? You know what? I'm going to try, I'm going to, I'm going to pitch something that I haven't had. Okay. Um, And, and as I describe it, we'll, we'll find out if it it becomes appetizing. This is big. I'm feeling how big this is. This is big. This is huge. So Mm -hmm. I am a vegetarian, which cuts out a lot, but there are these great substitutes but my favorite food mm-hmm. is Italian food. Uh, my family's Italian. I love Italian food. Mm-hmm. Close second though is Mexican food. Uh-huh. So I want to make the Italian taco. Ooh. Starting, you get just like a regular uh, uh, corn shell. I'm going to mm-hmm. say, take that out. You oh, basically okay. get pasta that you do like for lasagna. You, you spread it, you know, thick. You uh-huh. harden that up. You just have this hard, dry mm-hmm. pasta as the shell. Mm-hmm. And then for the, instead of like a uh, taco, like ground beef, you get like, because I'm a vegetarian, you get like impossible or beyond like uh, mm. beef and you make a bolognese sauce, you okay. get, you know, some, some really spicy tomatoes and mm-hmm. you put that in there, you get a bolognese uh, on top of this dry, uh, hard uh, mm-hmm. pasta shell. Mm-hmm. On top of that, you just get a lot of ricotta cheese, ricotta oh. cheese. Oh uh-huh. yeah. Okay. Uh, dump, dump that right on top. I mean, uh-huh. I'm talking about a thick layer. I'm saying if, if you equal portion to the bolognese. Okay. And then on top of that, wow. you just put a cannoli and that's your taco. And that's. Whoa. It's like dinner and dessert in yeah. the taco. And it's a little this... crusty. I've had dry pasta just to taste. And mm-hmm. that's a little, that's a little crusty. <laughs> Yeah, no, I say, here's the thing. There's no time, uh, you know, who has time to boil pasta mm-hmm. and who has time to wait for dessert? This cuts those two steps out. It's true. And I think this will only be served to go on like a little, uh, you know how like they have like a Dutch Brothers coffee, uh, like booth, you just sort of drive through and you pick up your coffee right. and you drive yeah. away. Uh-huh. This is just quick, like, hey, you want the bolognese uh, 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 taco with the cannoli on top? Mm-hmm. You take it, you drive in your car, you, you munch right into it. And then when you're at the car wash, you just roll the window down so that you mm-hmm. can spray all the bolognese and uh, cannoli off your face. I like it. And it's like you're getting the whole Italian experience to go. As awesome. Yeah. The yeah. whole Italian experience to go, by the way, mm-hmm. was uh, everyone leaving Italy after the war and moving to New York City. That's the Italian experience to go. <laughs> So you have a story for your product, which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. you get a pamphlet about Ellis Island. It's oh, like, wow. you know how like uh, uh-huh. when you get fish and chips, it's wrapped in newspaper. Mm-hmm. This is just wrapped in like Ellis Island records. Mm-hmm. And then you can be like, oh, Enzio Campriali is from here. Great. Good to know that. Wow. Yeah. You can spot family members, maybe, you know, like that's pretty, that's pretty interesting. Or learn a little bit of history that you didn't really... Um, I mean, know about as you're eating the dish from that location. Of course, there's no time to cook, but there's always time for genealogy. Exactly. Education is power and so is speed. Awesome. Thanks, Dewey. <laughs> thanks for thanks for teaching me a little bit of something. And thanks for, you know, talking about your new product uh, before, you know, it's hit even the 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 kitchens. Uh, mm-hmm. We're working. Yeah. It's in production right now. We're, we're doing tests. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Yeah. So, you know, don't, don't steal this product. It's shown here. We're not taking it off. Dewey's allowed it, but don't steal the product. Uh, So Dewey, thanks. Uh, Is there anything else that you want to talk about? Or is there a place that we can find your book that you'd like us to go and purchase or skim a little bit? Yeah. I mean, I think you can read the first chapter maybe the 
first two chapters even oh, wow. on amazon.com if you just type in dewey and the blur of brandy there's a preview you mm -hmm. can get it on kindle which is great you can save the planet and just download mm -hmm. it to your device or you can buy a book i even have i have a real copy and i'll say this oh. my favorite thing i know my green screen was getting away my favorite thing about this book is my my good friend rin davis did the um artwork that you can't see in the video right now i can see i can see it was it was blinking out a little bit yeah there oh uh, uh it's blurry yeah. it's a blur Ooh. um but yeah the, the artwork uh is 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 my absolute favorite part um so what you can do is you can buy a copy of the book mm -hmm. and then like hang it on your wall and Ooh. you can have a very fine piece of art mm -hmm. uh but yeah just just amazon that's where it is keeping okay. it simple uh i feel like um Jeff Bezos doesn't have enough money. Right. Uh, he, he's got uh, what I would call a, a healthy portion. But if mm -hmm. we could give him more money mm -hmm. and if we could just give him more leeway, like, come on, guys. Yeah. He's he he's had a tough break. People are too critical of Jeff Bezos and how hard his employees work and how little taxes he pays. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to say this, that Amazon is great. I think nothing needs to change in our society. Every single person is happy. And nothing's wrong. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> we live in an ideal society right now. This is That's it, everyone. Say. This this is as good as it gets and should be. Short Absolutely. answer. <laughs> Short answer is the book is on Amazon. Great. Awesome. Uh, that and it's super easy. It's super easy to get to. Uh yeah. <laughs> another reason to love. Uh and is there any way that we can find you on social media or anywhere that you post, you know, blurbs or captions? Yeah, I post captions here. I, I send out tweets, which I think every day are titles of books. Uh, but yeah, I think my Twitter handle is the Dewey Nelson. I'm uh, on Instagram. I think I'm, I never remember my handles. Right? <laughs> we never I'm, look at our own handles. <laughs> I'm what the children call old. Uh, Jam Top Dewey on Instagram, and uh, I'm just around. You can find my my screen name on AIM is uh, probably like Nintendo is cool, and my dad is never mad at me at uh -huh. AIM. Uh, I don't know. I wish yeah. AIM was still around. <laughs> I, I miss it. I miss the days of you know the instant messenger. That was the days of the instant messenger. Yeah, what I've learned through life is instant gratification does not make things better. Uh, the harder something is to do, the, the greater, uh, the more rewarding it is, mm -hmm. which is why I just put my laundry in the street every day and mm -hmm. I just walk back out. I'm like, great, I've got to get my dirty laundry that I threw out of the window last night. So mm -hmm. I appreciate it when my clothes are still there in the morning. And yeah. some of them aren't. Yeah, it's all about appreciating what you don't know will happen. That's yeah. great. I think that's a great message to leave off on. Thank yeah. you so much, Dewey, for joining us. And thank you so much for talking about your book and the process as well. That's so cool. I, I'm so cool. I'm so excited to have everyone listen and see, uh, you know, what you did and how you did it. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. This has been so fun. Yeah, it's been a blast. And thanks for doing, you know, like little bits with me too. <laughs> uh, thank you everyone so much for watching. Please take some time to check out Dewey's book on Amazon available for you today and can be like prime to deliver to your house or you can get it right away on Kindle. Uh, make sure to also check out Dewey on Twitter for some live captions and then on Instagram as well or on AIM you know, whatever you use. And uh, make sure to also subscribe, like this video, check out more awesome topics, awesome artists that visit us every Tuesday on Talk About It Tuesday. My name is Angelica Zadak with This Is Improv and this has been Dewey Nelson. Thank you everyone. Goodbye. Bye.